Today I'm going to be doing something I've always wanted to do. It's your girl Take a Little. I'm going to be showing you guys how I set up for my YouTube recording. Like I wanted to work on this until I felt like I was confident and I liked my quality. Then I will show you guys what I do. Like I'm going to show you guys how to record and how to set your, your if I say ingredients, your instruments, instruments, your equipment up in a small space. Like I don't have a big studio. I don't have a studio. I'm using my guest room as my studio. You just gotta do what you gotta do, baby, because you just gotta do what you gotta do. Okay. So first I'm gonna talk about my camera. The camera I use is a Canon T7i. It's one of like the Rebel series. This is like, it came out in 2017 and I've had my YouTube channel for like two years now. And I would recommend getting a nice camera, but I wouldn't focus on really like getting the most recent camera you can get like something that's maybe like somewhat old like maybe, like not old per se but like something that came out like let's say last year and then invest it in your lenses because it's what really makes or breaks like your quality because if you look at my old my old um videos i thought that when i had the latest camera because i bought my camera the year it came out and that was the year started my youtube channel so i think it came out in 2017 or 2010 or summer channel but around that time so it's like i thought that was like gonna be legit but it's like i had the camera but i didn't know what i was doing i put in my kit lens and then it's like oof. and i was like more of the person that thought that when you want to start you need to have a bomb camera but no the things you need to invest in are the lenses and your lighting those are the two important things i'll say you should invest in the, the lens makes the camera the lens makes your quality because if you put a good lens on a very old camera you can still get like something good from it compared to when you put um you have an expensive camera but you just have like the kit lens or something not against the kit lens the kit lens is actually still works and they're very good and useful but if you get your um camera and you don't have a good lens it's not gonna make your quality good like it's gonna be like the quality i used to have so i wanted to talk about that so this is the camera so i have my mac attached to it but this um lens i have attached with my camera is the sigma 18 to 35 and then lens. this is the lens I recommend when you can finally afford it but you gotta start from somewhere I wanted to show you guys what this looked like so yeah that's the camera so on to the next thing we're gonna start in order which I got the lenses because I do believe in investing in your lenses because your lenses is what really makes or breaks your camera so the first lens we're gonna talk about ignore that it's gonna be the kit lens. So this is the lens that came with my camera, it's the kit lens. It's not the greatest lens, but it's also not horrible. Like you can you can make good stuff with this. But I feel like if you wanna use the kit lens, you need to know how to like color correct. You need to know how to set your white balance, like get the best out of your lens, right? Because I got my camera with the, with the Amazon bundle deal. That's how you help to like save on um, um, your, basically your purchase because if, we're to, if I was gonna get the camera from Best Buy, I would just get the camera with just the body and it might not, but like, that's not enough. We need more. So the lenses, ooh, I need to drop my lens. That would've been brutal. So the lenses I have is the Sigma one, which I'm using to report right now talking to you guys. And I also have my kit lens and I have the Nifty 50. If you are going to upgrade from using your kit lens to record, get the Nifty 50, Nifty 50 um, lens. It's literally, the most affordable lens for a beginner and it gives you like that blurry background if you want to get that blurry background like i don't have that right now because the distance between me and my camera and or the distance between me and my background is not that much they wouldn't give it to me because my space is very small and limited so basically you want to make sure but this one would give it to me this 50 50 like because it's kind of like it zooms in but my sigma lens i'm allowed to zoom in and out kind of like how i can zoom in and out with the kit lens but this one you can it's already like zoomed in like there's no adjusting whatever it is it shows you on this how you're going to be so if you want to like i like this lens for like recording makeup looks because when you really recording makeup people don't really need to see your background unless you want to do like a little bit of like the lifestyle like with the nice decorations like flowers and everything in your background you can do that like i don't have the background i want to have for my youtube yet 
so I'm gonna wait until I can have a nice base because I'm constantly always moving. I'm either in school or I'm in the kitchen recording right now and then tomorrow I'll be in like my guest room because we have people coming over so my guest room spot has been taken over so I can't record in the guest room anymore that's right that's where I did everything if I was in the guest room I could show you guys how I set up and everything but so it's like I'm constantly moving so I don't really have that nice background like I really want it to be so that's it but I'll get my own house someday and I'll get my own studio so and I would not have this problem but if I really do recommend getting the nitty gritty lens because this is big and even if you get your kit lens and you're just like oh my god I can never do anything with the kit lens don't sleep on this lens if you want to record good content you can record good content on this lens you just you need to know how to work it and how to maneuver with it. You just gotta basically learn how to adjust with it, like your color, set in everything, your aperture, everything, like, baby, baby. So in my last setup, I usually have like two softbox lights, like each side of me, and then I have my ring light facing me. Then I also have another newer LED light above me, and let me show you guys that right now. So this is what my front looks like. We have the softbox light right there. We have another softbox light right there. We have the fridge back there. We're gonna ignore the fridge. And then we have the ring light. And then the camera is right there, which is sitting on the tripod. Then we have the other newer light above me. And that's how I get my lights to be situated, okay? I also have the light like facing the warm section so that I can like, not be as washed out and it makes my skin like stay true to color. I also did the same thing with my ring glass. You can see I have the two um, orange filters on it. Then I also have the white filters on it. So whenever I want to do a video with my ring light only, it's like it's giving me like a nicer complexion without being washed out because sometimes the ring light can get powerful and minor bulbs they're not LED. If you're gonna get a ring light, I recommend you get a ring light with the LED. Anything you're gonna get, try and get LED lights. You can use a softbox that you can try and get like the regular bulbs, but like let your lights be LED lights. I maximize all the light so that a light's hitting me here, 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 and like above this area too. I do record in my kitchen or in my guest room because there's not really like a spare place for me to record. So like I am the YouTuber that kind of like sets and then unpacks everything when I'm done with recording for the day. I have this um, headlight. It's a Fulvid Tech. Fulvitech Studio Pro Light. I use this because like I don't have that much light in my room. So whenever I want to record, I need to make sure I secure as much light as I can get because we don't have that much light, you gotta pick it to make it. But this is my headlight. It came in a three pairs. It came with the softbox lights. And then in my back, I have to have my three lights, which is this newer light right here. Let me raise it up so you guys can see. I like to have this back wall over here. And everything I'm talking about is going to be in the description. I'm going to use this light right here and you guys can see how I set up. I know my shirt's backwards. This is how I can get the look I'm scoring for for this makeup look. This is the newer um, 660 um, LED light. It's in like with two um, control panels which gives you like the yellow uh, light control system and then they also give you the white one and you can just like tone it down and it gives you like a warm look, almost like a sunshine kind of look. Let me just show you what the front looks like with this light. That's what it looks like with this one. And then if I were to tone it down, I also get this as the white light. So you just basically pick and choose. The other light I also use is this um, Young Newell 216. Um, light right here. Let me bring it closer so you guys can see that. It's in focus, yeah. This one is more like, I think of it like those spotlights that help you give like that halo effect. So let's just open this bad boy up. I didn't plug it in because I didn't really need that much light for this area because I feel like this room was well lit, so I didn't really need that much light. But I'm gonna plug it in so you guys can see what it looks like. This light also comes with filters, which are like these filters over here. So like when I did my Valentine's look, it was this weird filter I used with it. I'll show you guys how it gives you the different red effects. So this light is bomb. So I can use it as a halo effect on its own. So that's something to consider. I didn't have it. It wasn't before. Ignore him. 
Hi, viewers. Will you introduce me? Tell them how I introduced you to the uh, to the drop uh, fly bomb, the big one. Nope. All right. That's cool. I'll be back, y'all. It has like four knobs on it. It's like it has the one for the battery, meaning that if you were to because. You can also plug in batteries in there, rechargeable batteries for you to use that. But I don't really like the batteries. And then they have a little knob which lets you like adjust how bright you want it. When it's the lights all the way at this end, it means that you can basically, let me show you. I don't want to blind y'all. But basically this is how bright it gets. This is probably not the best way to show you guys, but you get the point. Um, I'm twisting the knob right now and it's literally taking it down. You see, it literally, it's a spotlight and it has this little reflector covers that cover it. So it's like, it literally bounces the light off, which I really like. So when I did my Valentine's look, this is how I just put the red culture in it. And then it gives me what I want. So I'm gonna face it to something so you guys can see. But this is the red filter on it. And you can see how it made this one section. So I recommend this light if it's really cheap. This store's like 56 and I try not to kill it. She kill it. She like got me hooked in this light. So basically when I want to do my dark light, I'll make them even like so that it can stand in the same position. Y'all ignore my shirt. Okay. 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 And then I'll brighten them up and then I'll turn them this on the back. It's already turned on. I usually like to use the white one for the bag. And you can just see how well lit my background is. It might be a little bit too much, but I usually adjust it to my satisfaction. So that way, my background is well lit and I'm not having shadows. I usually like to tilt them a little bit so like they're facing this corner and then this one is facing here like so. And that way they're all coming together. So basically what I like to do, I like to have three lights for my background and then I have one, two, three, four lights for my front because I want lights to hit me from every angle. Like, I do not play up on my lights, baby. So, I also have another light, which is my Lino Studio light. And I used to use that one when I first started YouTube. That was like my two original sound boxes I used to use. But then I got, I found out about, I found out, I found out about the Fulvic Tech lights and I'm just like, wow, baby, I need to get into this. Let me show you. Let me just show the brand so y'all can see. When I say Fulvic Tech, it's a showy. This is the good stuff. This light is bomb. Like when I, when, if you're gonna get Starbucks lights, I recommend you get this one. Like the Lumo Studio are good, but they're not as bright. Like they, they'll get the work done in a very small place. But when I got this one, this one has like, I think like six bulbs in it. And I'm just like, wow. I remember talking about my Lumo Studio light and, oof, baby. This one came with a tripod. I used to have two of this light, but, I broke the bubble one, so I had to throw that one away. So now, when I didn't have my Young Nua light, which is somewhere in the back right there, I used to use this one as my softball light to get like a halo effect. So I usually have this one sitting on the floor and I prop it up like so. So when I have my two red lights facing each other or kind of like facing each other like I showed you guys earlier on, I have this one in the middle. So basically I have three lights behind me, which is this one, that one, and that one. And then I also have my two style box light, my ring light, and my other newer light. Because this two came, this one came in the bundle with two. This is what I usually do. And that's pretty much my whole light setup. Basically, anything you can get from this, like even if you can't get all the lights, make sure you just get the standard two style box lights. When you're starting out, you don't need this much light. It's just that having a backlight helps with your background. But if you're gonna be using like a backdrop, like cloth, it doesn't really matter. Um, how your background looks then, unless you want to get that halo effect that you want to probably put one light behind them. Another important thing I want to talk about is like, I like to kind of put myself in like a little mini cubicle. And how I do that, like you can see I have my um, styrofoam boards, but it also has like a reflector on them. I got my tips from Kilechi and Desi. So why I got this foam boards is because um, my room is not painted white and usually when you're doing when you want to like 
when you want to record you want to make sure you capture as much light and the light is bouncing off of something so that everywhere there's no shadows this is how i make sure that there's no shadows in my videos the light sitting here i have my um handy dandy headlight so this headlight is from Fovitech. it came it came english is hard it came with the two sapphire lights so this is how um i use this light over my head so like now i have the two foam boards like sitting next to me on each side and then I have the headlight that's covering me and so when I sit this is how I record so like you can see the light is bouncing out of my head and then I have my two um basically white lets the lights bounce over something and then black can't stop the light so I recommend getting one of this but I like this one not the white because it also has like the aluminum foil kind of material texture but I also got a stand for them which I just got a tripod and the tripod has like a little bit of a clamp so I just press it open and I clip it on in there so I can show you guys how I do that. And that's how I clamp it up. Then I also have my little handy dandy cake pan that I use to balance my light. Like you can just see how this looks on me right now. Like, but it like this, like there's shadow, no shadow, shadow, no shadow. Like you can just see how that does that. So I have that sitting in front of me, like I have it propped up. So I get the foam board and I prop it up on like some tape or something. And I sit right there and then you just see like how I prop myself up. And then I also have another handy dandy reflector that is propped underneath the ring light so that it can literally bounce the light onto my face. Then I have my mirror, which can light up too, but I just decided not to use it because I'm just like, do I really care for that? I don't. So basically you want to get those lights and make sure you get the reflectors. The reflectors, hand it in. This is so easy. Just if you don't know, if you don't want to make a reflector, just take like something like a pan. This one doesn't come in the part because it's not like, the way it should be, the foil is coming off. Literally, just write full paper around this, and then boom, we have a reflector. Like you can see how this does so much work. Like, look at my face. No reflector. Reflector. So I have two types of mics that I use when I'm recording. I use the Boya mic. This one is really long. Like it's really long. And this is what it looks like. And it has the switch right when i first started with my youtube channel i used to use this mic on a lot because i like that you just basically clamp it on and then you just talk it's so easy i like it because it's very long like the cord is very long so even if you wanted to put your, your camera like 30 miles away from you in your recording studio sorry about that you can literally be so far and plug it in like i mean you can see from where i'm sitting that my camera's not that far off for me i don't use this mic often because you have to actually remember like this with this mic i used to leave it on because it has a little battery in there and then the battery died so i haven't been able to replace it yet so i didn't care for it that much but it's a good mic and it's just like i wanted to get the world mic because i felt like that was more like my style and then this one you have to be careful because if you're talking you got to make sure like you're not like rubbing this area a lot, you don't have anything that's going to be irritating you. Like someone like me that have beads in my hair right now, if I move too much, this my pick is going to pick it up because it's literally on me compared to the other one that I, like, it's on my camera. You get this mic, get back a bad list because if you're someone like going to forget to turn it off, because so I would literally get done recording a whole like video and the mic is still turned on and the battery is just dying. So like it would last, it lasted me for a while, but eventually the battery would give up because the battery was just off. Like I was just, I just didn't remember to turn this off and I don't know why. So basically, get back a battery just in case you can get to that point. But always get back a battery. We're gonna talk, we're gonna talk about batteries in a second. Now for my road mic, I usually have this like propped up into my camera. It has this little handy dandy section. You put it, you plug it into right there in the camera spot and you just twist it on. And it has this little cord. Because right now as I'm talking, I'm recording and the mic is kind of like plugged into the camera right there. Sorry, my background keeps changing. Just like I keep getting up and moving things around. So the Duracell batteries for this mic. So when I just get those, I'm gonna show a clip of the batteries I use for this on the side. And that's all for um, audio. You just want to make sure your audio is clear, and you want to make sure you go to your settings and adjust them. Investment memory card.
art. This one, it's pretty good. Whenever I used to get the one that was like 64 gigs, don't get a 64 gig memory card if you're gonna be a YouTuber that's gonna record videos like regularly. If you're gonna be like recording when you felt like it, not really all the time, then maybe you can afford to get that, but no baby, don't do not do that to yourself. Like get the 128. The one I'm using to record right now is the 500 and I think 512 gigabytes. Cause I know like, I want, I'm a person like when I record a video, I like to keep my stuff after it's edited. I like to just leave that and I'm like, oh my God, I'm going to get that video. So invest in memory cards a lot, lots and lots and lots of memory card. When you first starting out, two memory cards is okay, but get the ones that actually have a lot of space in them. I know they might be costly, they might be expensive, but get them. It's gonna cost you a long time. You hate to record a video and then you're not done editing the previous old sequence and memory card and tells you memory card is full. Then what do you do? You have to stop recording because you have no other way you have to go and use your phone to record. But someone like me who doesn't have that much space on my phone, kind of sucks because like my phone is like a 64 gig, so I can't really do much on the phone in the first place if I wanted to. So that's why I didn't get the memory card. You already have the camera. That's if you have the camera get the memory card and you don't have to start to channel with a camera. You can always use your phone to start your um, YouTube channel. So that's that. I would suggest getting the camera. And then batteries. When I got my camera, like I said, it came in the pack. It came in the bundle. I'm going to show you guys. I got I got so many things. There's some things that I'm not even really used to this day. Like it came with like some telephoto lenses, like some wide zoom lenses. Let me just show you one of them. My camera came with all this kind of extra lenses and everything, but I've never really used them. It's a little dirty, it needs to be cleaned. But this is the lens. I don't really use them yet, because I'm just like, for what I'm doing, I don't need them, but I'm trying to get into photography, so eventually I'll get that end of my money. But basically, you want to get, um, more than one battery, more than two batteries, I'll really say. And then it comes, my bag, my package still, my camera came with like the charger and it came with a backup battery. No, it didn't come with a backup battery. It came with the charger and this battery. So I ordered my own backup battery because why not? If you're gonna be recording YouTube videos and you're not in Nigeria, you should, or out of the country where like you have like light shortage, you should always invest in getting backup cameras and battery. I will show you my other one right now, but it's currently charging. Like while I'm recording with my good battery that's charged, I have one charging, but I have another one that's already fully charged. So something were to happen because I have three backup batteries. I used to have four, I don't know what I did with the other one, but I have three batteries and basically when one is being used, one is being charged and then one is rested until it's gonna get used. So it's always a constant rotation. So I never have to stop because I take my time when I'm recording. I don't like to be rushed. I like to take my time and sit down and get what I need to get done. So if you're gonna be recording, you wanna make sure that you literally have your stuff ready because more, nothing is more painful than getting this content, getting this idea ready, and you can't pull through with it because your stuff is dead. And if you're in Nigeria, if Nepa takes like now, then you're screwed. But there's another adapter thing that most YouTubers in Nigeria use. I'm gonna talk about that. I'm gonna show you guys what they use. Like it's, they just literally plug it into their um, camera and then they record with that. So it's like, they don't have to constantly worry about battery, especially with the way the NEPA and light shortage is in Nigeria. But the only problem with that is that if NEPA were to take light while you're doing that, you kind of screw, like you lose your footage. So that's, it's not easy being a YouTuber in Africa. It's not. So props to everybody that's a YouTuber in Africa that's taking this seriously. I'm gonna go off on my phone, not turn it off, but it doesn't want to turn it off. But basically, this is how I use my, this is what the EOS utility tool is gonna look like on your laptop if you use it as a monitor. Because this is the cheapest way to like record yourself and see what you look like. And so it literally tells you your F stop, your ISO, and like then, I mean, your shorter, this is your shorter speed. So basically, when you want to record, you want to like whatever setting you set your frame rate to, you want to make sure you double that. So that's why I'm using like one over 60. And then you want to play around with this. So I don't want to do that. I want to stay in 160. So that's where, that's where it's at, baby. I just place it when I'm recording. So I'm like not really too tech savvy with all this area. And then this is like, if you're going to use this, just copy what I do with this detail set. And this is going to give you the best the best of the best of the best settings so you can look and beautiful now if you want to see if you're like 
when I want to record, the first thing I do, I want to make sure that um, I am in focus. And then also, I want to also show you guys how I focus on, what is the word? Make sure like I'm not overexposed or underexposed. And then what I do is I click on this button right here. It always disappears now. It's not meant to do that, but mine does that. If you know a way to fix this problem, please let me know. Okay, we're gonna start over. So when I click on this button right now, and I click on the other one, because it's meant to stay on the screen, it will tell me that I am underexposed. This, if it's right here, if this knob is right here, you know, it means you're directly exposed. So right now, since I'm underexposed, and I'm gonna go down one more from the aperture. And I'm gonna click this button again and we're gonna see if I'm correctly exposed. So right now it's this is where you want it to be. If it's right here, this is how you know that you're recording everything is set the way it should be. So that's how I start this like the step I do before I start recording my videos. So make sure you try to get this EOS utility too. I'm gonna to do a video on how I get it and you guys can see that. I'm just showing you guys how I'm gonna move this into my laptop. It's my monitor. I'm recording in the kitchen basically. I only use this island as like my prop. I only use the island as my prop. So right now I have like little decorations over here. Flowers, fake fruits, flowers, a cloth, flowers, a lamb. And when I was recording in the other room, I usually would have something on my wall like snow. And it's just like this I got from Ross and you just put the flowers in there. And it just gives you like that homey vibe or you can put like literally like a, a frame or a coat in it. And this is one of my favorite coats because I had it on my graduation. If you watch my DIY, I wish you should watch one now. So I put the link right there. The best is yet to come. Basically, this is how, like, basically you want to just get, if you're going to do a home black style kind of like background, you want to just get props, like nice things. Like you don't have to go buy things. Like take whatever decoration you have in your house. Anything you have, just use it. I also like, use backdrops but when i use the backdrop i use like my um backdrop stand but it's so chaotic right here so i'm not i'm not sure that yet because i want to do another video on my background and i'm gonna go in depth with that but whenever i do for youtube now i tend to like want to use the lifestyle um recording set that's why i'm not showing you guys the backdrop when i'm going to do my video for how i record for instagram then i'm going to show you guys the background that i use but basically kind of plain wall find an area in your house that you like and just basically put it in there and there you have it and that's how i record my videos hope you enjoyed this tutorial i feel like i hit everything you got it you got it you got it you got it